What's up, everyone? Uh, today, I am interviewing uh, one of our members, Josh Williams. He goes by XJ Will. Uh, Josh has been with us uh, since the very beginning of that pitch. Um, he's landed uh, deals with Taco Bell for a bunch of money to a bunch of placements that we've landed for him. He's, he lands all the time, and he's a great guy uh, and really cool story. Um, he actually went full time through that pitch. Um, he gave me a call one day. Uh, he ended up leaving his job at Guitar Center um, because he was going uh, full time in music licensing. So that was that was a really really cool accomplishment um, that we did. And you know, he's just a great guy, and you can learn so much from him. Um, anyways, cool. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Welcome to the That Pitch Podcast. The That Pitch Podcast helps music producers and artists tap into the world of sync licensing, publishing, music business, and more. So if you are tired of trying to make it and you're more interested in making a living, then you are in the right place. The That Pitch Podcast is brought to you by thatpitch.com, the number one music licensing tool for producers and artists. I'm your host, Mark, the founder of thatpitch.com. Now let's get into the show. Awesome. What's up, buddy? What's going on, Mark? Good to see you, bro. How All right. You? I'm doing good, man. Um, thank you so much for, for chatting today. Um, if you guys are tuning in, uh, this is my buddy, Josh Williams. Um, goes by XJ Will online. He, in my opinion, uh, just in a couple of years has become like the, in my opinion, like king of sync online. You're killing it. No, dude, you're killing it, bro. You're landing deals left and right. You got a massive Taco Bell deal. What what are you doing today? You got a uh, you're working on a brief for Microsoft. You have a bunch of deadlines. Get, go into that real quick. Okay, so the stuff I can talk about, like uh, I, I am working on a Microsoft deal for an Xbox commercial, which is really cool. Dope. And um, last week we just got the uh, release for an Apple placement with um, their TV show today at Apple. Um. That finally, we've been working on that for the last month or two, and that finally aired last week. So, like, oh man, we're vibing, man. It's awesome. That's Getting good upfront. It's good royalties. Killing it, dude. Um, well, so basically, what I wanted to chat with you about today is you've gone from, you know, in a handful of years, you were, you know, producing artists, you were figuring it out. And then I remember, you know, what, last year or two years ago, finally got to an awesome full-time status and now you're just placing stuff all the time. Um, I wanted to go through your story firstly and just like really chat about kind of the, you know, the come up story, if that makes any sense. Oh yeah, bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> Struggle is real. Yeah, dude. It's all, it's all a pain in the ass until it, it starts uh, doing really well. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, man, go, go back to your story. So firstly, where okay. are you located? You're in Kansas city. I'm in Kansas city, Missouri. Um, I've, I grew up though in St. Louis, which is like three hours east. And um, essentially I grew up in a, I grew up in a bad neighborhood. St. Louis was at the time, like one of the most dangerous cities of the country. That's, and yeah, so like, if dangerous. it wasn't for music, like I probably wouldn't be here, which is yeah. pretty wild. Um, but like, I got a, I, I grew up playing um, trumpet. I started trumpet when I was 11, which is kind of early. I mean, late for like someone that's getting into music. But um, my teacher was like, hey, you should, told my parents, you should get this kid some lessons. He likes actually practicing. And so like um, from there um, progressed until I got into about 16, I started doing like gigs locally and things like that, managing myself. Um, I've always had like a entrepreneur mindset, I guess, from my dad. And so um, from there, I, I got a scholarship for jazz studies into um, Kansas City. That's how I moved out here because it's, it's cheap. It, it's, yeah. it's super, uh, it's still close to home. So in case like something crazy happened in college, like I could still like <laughs> crawl to my parents' house. For sure. And for sure. Um, from there, I wish I could have came up with the idea that you had as far as like, Yo, like, let me just pay the adjunct faculty members and like save all the money. <laughs> yeah, wait, really, like, real quick. If if you're uh, like, if you don't know that story, really quick, I dropped out of. I had like a a pretty viral post back in like the late 2010s. I dropped out of Berkeley after a year, and because you know it's just so damn expensive, and I realized that um, 
all of the faculty members were just getting paid per hour. And my tuition, it turned out to be like $250 an hour for a drum lesson. And then I talked to these guys and they were like, yeah, I usually charge like 50 to 75 an hour. And I was like, okay, so Berkeley is pocketing like almost $200 for every... Okay, so I'm just going to fly up and pay off all these people, get like 20 lessons in a week, get tight with everybody, and then come back home. So I got a Berkeley education for like one-fifth the price per year. Uh, anyways, continue, that's Josh. Insane. That's the story real quick. <laughs> yeah, just for context, because like I realized like the ROI on a performance degree is literally nothing. Yeah. Like. Unfortunately, like the gigs and stuff I was doing, I, got, I had an opportunity, like the only, the, one of the biggest things that I think I benefited from that experience was um, the hustle game as far as like trying to contact people for gigs and things like that. And then the contacts, like the networking was really, really yeah. helpful because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have been able to do a bunch of touring later after I got out. Yep. So I was able to like tour in Japan, uh, UK, um, France, um, I still would love to do something in Sydney, but like Caribbean, all that kind of stuff. It was fun. Yeah. But uh, when I got back, funny you mentioned the adjunct fa faculty member stuff, because when I got back, I was like, what, 24, 25, probably at this time. And thankfully, I didn't have any college tech. I had a full ride scholarship. But like, I noticed when one of my teachers from college invited me to one of his shows, I opened up the pamphlet and it's, it's a benefit concert because he can't pay his health insurance. And so oh. I was like, yo, like my whole mind like exploded. Like this is my future. I need to figure something else out. Dude. And that's how I got in the sink. Dude. Real quick. Early on, I got a similar story. I had a bunch of friends growing up. I got we got lucky because we knew people people that were older than us that we were tight with that were like mm -hmm. doing big things, like the the Chico. cool things. And then you know, like you go to their apartment or you go to their house and you're just like, oh Jesus. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> you're like uh, this I, take, huh? well it's funny because like if you grow up without any network and you don't know anybody you're like wow they got a billboard charting record you're like they must have made it and then right. you actually like hang out with them you meet like all their like, crazy ex-girlfriends <laughs> you like be, like you just see their reality <laughs> and like roaches in their apartment you're like yo the cool thing may not this be the like money thing right like, yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so figured out quick that, you know, it's not all... Uh, the music business was different than uh, notoriety in music, necessarily. Totally. Yeah. And at this point, I was managing a, a band, like an R&B, hip-hop, funk group that was... We were starting to do, like, tours around the region, which was fine. But, like, at 20, 24 to 26, that's a pivot point for most young musicians, whether yeah, mid -20s, bro. Old, they got ma married, um, <laughs> kids are starting to pop up. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. it was hard to keep that group together um, uh, in order to like do bigger things. And so that was another determining factor to me. Like, mm. all right, well, let me figure out this production thing. Cause like, I still want to make music and I got this degree. I've wasted, not wasted, but like I spent all this time trying to perfect yeah. making Western music. Like I got to do something with well, and also, I mean, uh, I was talking to one of my buddies last night. I went to this show and uh, his band broke up. It was one of my favorite bands in Charlotte, too. I was so bummed. We were catching up and we were both talking about production. And, um, you know, you're, you were originally a trumpet player, I'm originally a drummer, and mm -hmm. we're dependent on the artist, essentially, you know? And I was talking to him because he produces a lot now. And we were both just like, yo, the most badass thing about production is you're literally dependent In on nobody. Yeah, you have control over your career. It's amazing. You know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, man. It's a I, cheat code. It, it really is because like also you gotta learn about business. It's just such a great uh it's so good. Anyway, so back to you. <laughs> but like you you started uh producing a bunch, realized that this could kind of be the route. Well yeah producing first, but then I realized like being in the Midwest, there's not a lot of artists that have the uh, the budget for what I was trying to aspire for. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So, like at the at the moment, I was charging cheaper because I was trying to learn. I was willing to take less to get the experience. Um, just it's just like practicing. And so, yep. eventually, after I felt like I could charge more, no one could afford what I was what I wanted in order to start making a living. And that's how I got into focusing on publishing and sync licensing. Okay, and so like. 
Uh, I want to say I got into some libraries and stuff, which was fine, but I wasn't getting any placements. So um, after, I want to say about 18 months, I got my first one and that was with Taco Bell. And it was for a couple thousand dollars. And from there, I tried to reverse engineer what was going on and I wasn't having a lot of success at first. And so um, at this point, we're getting closer to when the pandemic struck. And so like I'm working at a guitar center to kind of like get cheaper gear to upgrade my stuff to I remember the quality. Yeah. And like um, that's when I ran into that pitch. And I was like, well, I mean, 45 bucks. And if they're paying placements that pay, basically, I could make like three or four placements and pay for the whole year. Like, yeah, I not. <laughs> it, makes, right, right. it makes sense to me. And so um, when I got into that pitch, it was really cool because like the amount of work that you guys pushed us to do, I think was a determining factor for me. So like I was yeah. maybe humming at like 35% because I had I had a full-time or part-time job at the time. And and you were like, yo, you need more volume. Like, this is cool that you like make a maybe a placement every now and then. But like, if you really want to do this, you need to tighten up your workflow, uh, get your systems in order and things of that nature. And I want to say within like the first three months, I placed like maybe eight or nine songs. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you killed it, man. <laughs> I'm so yeah. proud of you, bro. <laughs> it was nuts, bro. And then from there, I was like, all right, well, let me throw this in a box. Because you, you were telling me um, it's very um, important to make sure you take the leap yeah. uh, at the right time. Because if you get off too early, like, you're going to end up basically running around with a sword hanging from your head. Mm -hmm. um, to, and it, it affects your art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. And so, like, because of that. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm so proud because at one point you were like my little bro and now you're just like off killing it. And I'm, just, I'm so proud, man. Like, I'm just so happy. It's so great. Yeah, Sorry. It's, it's crazy. Like, so for, for those with more, for more context, like I actually was like, yo, Mark, I need your help. And so like, he gave me some, uh, some, a lot of, a lot of, um, accessible, um, attention, which was great. So like we had this vision map and, tried to like figure out okay exactly how am i going to live off of my music like yeah we we narrowed down the percentages of what what these revenue streams were going to look like he helped me build my website so i could start pitching oh. and things of that nature it was a lot <laughs> of work in the like what two three month range but like, too it, like kind, exponentially <laughs> yeah like changed it changed the game for me because like it had me to think more innovatively or methodically towards like okay if i want to do this there's a lot more laser focus that needs to be made oh man so, well, and yeah, now, sure. and, and then when you made the, the leap, I remember like you actually made the leap, you went full time, you were figuring it out. And now, I mean, it, it's just crazy. Like you really, really committed yourself to, to a direction. You're like, this is what I'm going to do with my music. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bullshit. Like I, like it's going to take a lot of work and you make a bunch of tracks. You keep cranking them out. You consistently work. And you're killing it now, man. Um, like, I can't even imagine the amount of upfront and residuals just constantly, you know, the, the thing is hey, like, after you get the ball rolling. Yeah. That, that's the thing is once you get the ball rolling and you know the kind of music that you make and like what you're really strong at, you can start to really understand the value that certain companies or licensing companies or brands or whomever uh, would get. And then it's just a matter of like getting a really good workflow and production and writing. And then you can just crank them out. Um, and like over time, it just all builds up. It's like a real estate portfolio, <laughs> you know, it's just like, yep. here's all my music and I'm living off my music. And a lot of people think it's just this, this thing where you immediately just make it, you know, you're no, like, no. Hey, I'm, I, this is great. I got signed and now I'm here, but ultimately what in music publishing licensing just a career music in general if you're an artist or whatever um it's just building over a long period of time brick by brick it's not sexy and then you kind of look down from the mountain and you're like holy shit <laughs> like i'm good <laughs> you know yeah i think i think a lot of it comes with patience like a lot of yeah. musicians just because like in the time period we're growing up in now, like instant gratification, all that kind of stuff. Like for now, sure. like if you have to be patient because again, if you, the experience is going to be the best teacher and also just like 
like you were saying, workflow volume, because like you're getting it's paid practice. You're getting better every time you finish a song. Yeah. And so that's like it's, extremely well, important. Yeah. Like, again, it's like as it's systemized, you build a catalog of music and then it's just a matter of like, where can I put it where it's going to make residuals for me? And that's literally yep. it. And then you become the guy of that that style yeah. of music. And that's when everything like goes in well, overdrive. And it's just like building a small business. Like you have clients, you have customers, you have you got repeats. They keep coming back and like you have a steady income and then it just compounds over time because each one of those people, they tell other people, you know, yep. you, you killed it with that Taco Bell commercial early on. And then, you know, I would assume that just by doing that, you got more opportunities because you were trusted to do that thing. But a big thing that yep. I always kind of like say in that pitch, and you heard this early on, the first placement is the hardest. Oh yeah. Because totally. Yeah, it's like the it's like when you finally get the trust of somebody in the licensing community, whether it's a music supervisor or it's a YouTuber or something else, once you have the trust and people know that hey, this is a product that works, you know, like the Model T was much harder to sell <laughs> than current Fords, you know, right. cuz people were like I don't, is this thing going to explode? I don't know. But once people, you know, they're, you know, with their top hats and shit on, they're, they're driving around. Everyone's like, wow, this is way better than a horse. We should all do this. I don't have to feed it. Right. This car doesn't <laughs> shit on me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that should be the title of this episode. <laughs> this car doesn't shit on me with Josh. Um, but yeah, no, th that's the thing. It's like, once you have the trust of a customer, then it, it's kind of just proof like, oh, this works. This is okay. And then it just kind of expands from there, you know? Yeah. And that's that's something I teach with a lot of my students as well right. is that like, if you can make their job as easy as possible, and I don't have to worry about any sample clearance or nothing like that. Like this person I can go to and I can depend on them. Mm -hmm. Like, you have them for life <laughs> and yep. they'll, I mean, that they, they're not losing any money over it. Like they'll keep coming back. Yep. Yep. We got repeat clients that come back every single month for that pitch. Like and they're, we, they're probably looking for certain names. Absolutely. And, but once they pick a new name they're that person starts getting a bunch more cause they're like, Oh, I, I get it. Like, this is the brand. Like, this is what they do. This is really great. This is going to work for me for this specific thing. Yep. Um, but you know, it's, it's funny. Cause I remember when, we, uh, again, like, so you were that pitch member, uh, that pitch pro at the time we were, I, I decided to offer that pitch premiere, um, mm -hmm. which at the point of this episode, that pitch premiere is no longer available, but I was doing, you know, kind of one-on-one -on -one calls with everybody because I just wanted, you know, uh, there were a lot of needs within the community and I was still figuring out that pitch at that time. <laughs> I was like, you know, hey, yeah, we this do was this like year one or year two. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, you know, we, I was figuring it out. Um, cause at that time I was just primarily a producer myself. So, um, but I remember when you like really made the switch and you're like, oh, my music is a business. Like that was, I felt like that was huge for you. It's like, okay, I need a site. I need to build a client base. Like I need to really get going and market myself and I'll never have anything to worry about. Um, yep. And now you're on TikTok, fucking yeah, massive on that, there. You're TikTok like the sink was... guy on TikTok, bro. <laughs> yeah, that was that was on accident, which was hilarious. Uh, I just like teaching, and so, so um, go go through the story of that because, like, over the pandemic, you just got massive on tink, on TikTok regarding sync, regarding music in general, music business. Um, this was this was yeah. also like a huge influence from you because oh, I remember bro. when <laughs> check this out. I never, I don't think I've ever told you this. So when you were talking about like giving someone an electronic coffee on uh, Instagram, I, so I used to love doing, I, I like social media just in general. I like yeah. content and teaching. Wait, but let's, like, let's explain what electronic coffee is real quick. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so basically the, the best thing, that you could ever do in a business is reciprocity. So like giving, doing someone a favor, like that's the best thing you could possibly do to network with people and just connect. And so Mark had this crazy idea of just doing that 
over um, like showing indie pop producers how to like basically release a song. And um, I don't know if you were giving that PDF and stuff away for free or not. Yeah, but I think so, you were at one point. Yeah, before before that pitch was like really cooking, I was still just producing indie pop artists all around the world, and it was like a free download. Here's how you know you can put out your own record and actually so you don't have to pay a PR agent. I paid a bunch of interviews to PR agents um, so we could learn their system. And then I just gave it out for free for everybody. So um, because I was producing indie pop artists, indie pop artists were like, wow, this is really helpful to me. And then they, you know, just so happened to start working with me because I was just helping everybody. <laughs> yeah, it was like, what else you got? Now yeah, I trust you because you, like, you gave me all this value. But that's what I did with that pitch early on too. I was I just made uh, free things regarding sync, and I was like, "Hey I guys, would manage like, our finances." I remember all that old stuff. Oh yeah, that's no, it's still in there, man. I actually, oh, uh, nice. I, told, I told somebody to like. Uh, I mean, the whole thing is like you should be able to produce full time off of sync, no problem. Like, you, like it's a massive market. It's still in. It's it's so insane that totally. It's been so confusing for so long. And now it's like simple. It's like, there's no reason why you can't do this whole time. Mm -hmm. There's just so much money to go around at this point. <laughs> yeah, there's, 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 there's a lot of demand still, which is, I mean, it's only growing because you got the metaverse, which is going to be crazy. And like, yep. yeah, it's it's insane. But like, so with the pandemic, I just had a lot, of, a lot of extra time because at the time I was working at Guitar Center's distribution center. So I moved from the storefront, which was like a really crappy job to working and loading up a truck basically at a guitar center distribution's place. But like what happened, they started upping demanding overtime from us because like the holiday season was coming in and this is like year one of the pandemic. So like did not nobody want them hands from COVID at all. No. I still to this day have been fortunate not to have caught in it. Oh dude, I've and gotten so, it like, like three um, times now, bro. And I got <laughs> I got I got the vax and I got boosted. I've gotten it like three Thanks. times. Dude, so yeah, I've just given up. That's probably why I just like don't. I can't think anymore. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Like I, I was, I was terrified because of the side effects, like tinnitus mm -hmm. and all this kind of crazy, yeah. like, random yeah. stuff. Like it was yeah. just like, nah, I'm good. Right. But anyways, right. um, so like, I was that. That was when I was like, all right, it's time to leave. Like I've saved up six months' rent. Let me just like jump out of here. So I had a little extra time to make videos, just sharing what I was doing. How I was uh, making like mixing tips, production tips, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what video it was, but I just mentioned like, yeah, I got my music in like a commercial and it paid like uh, like four thousand dollars, and like it went super viral. And I was like, oh wait a minute, like a lot of people I guess don't know about this. Yep. And so like I just started sharing basically my process, how how it's done, and all that kind of stuff. And um, thankfully, it was during the time when tick it was way easier to go viral on TikTok than it is. Now. Right, right. <laughs> but like, um, it, it was it, it was just the same situation because I think around that time when you were doing your release PDF, it was when Instagram was the thing. Like, it was yeah. still really easy to get a wide reach of, of yeah. uh, new people. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I think everyone kind of complicates marketing. They're, they're like, yeah, it was popping off, True. so now I got to go to the new platform. Ultimately, they mm -hmm. all work. You know, it's just like, which ones do you understand really well? Context. Yeah. Because Context the thing is like, yeah, TikTok's popping off. But like, if, you know, you're trying to market yourself on there and you really understand Instagram and Facebook, there's still billions of people on Instagram and Facebook. Like there's nothing <laughs> like, and people are talking about like, um, you know, marketing on Facebook and like since the iPhone update, like it's much or like the or yeah the iPhone update it's like much more difficult too and because like you don't have security access to apocalypse like, or whatever yeah right but it but it's like you know so everyone's saying like you should really market yourself on TikTok or YouTube or whatever Facebook still has like fifty five thousand data points on you like I, you're they know things like you're good you can still like whatever just makes the most sense I know people who've made a lot of money just marketing themselves off of Pinterest or like, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, if you're in music, you're a business and go where your audience is and just continuously just kind of post what you're up to. Don't have to do anything more than that. Just do that. And then whatever you're about will blow up. Just like keep doing it. You just stayed really yeah. consistent with, with, uh, that pitch. You were always uploading tracks. You still are. 
you know, <laughs> like yep. you have a bunch of music. Um, and then, uh, you know, with TikTok, you're posting it right now. You're just a consistent person. You just bro, show up, bro. I have 14,000 TikToks as of today. I checked it yesterday. You've posted like, 14,000 times on TikTok. 14, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. Not 14, 1400. Okay. I was about so to 1, say 1,440 videos. I was, about, I was about to be like, dude, you got to like, you got to chill. <laughs> you got to do less drugs, bro. <laughs> well, I mean, so like for me, the value was everything. Cause it's like, yo, like if I can harness at scale, like 10,000 views, regardless of how many videos it took, cause they're only 15 seconds. Right. So like if you if you take I don't know four videos can get me in front of 10,000 like I was, there was a meme uh that I saw the other day and it was just like no one understands like how many people 100 people really looks like anymore. Right. 50,000 people fills a stadium. Like right. so anytime I'd post I'd be like yo I might be talking in front of like a stadium worth of like potential clients. Yeah. So it's like really it it gives you more I guess uh motivation to just just pick up the phone and record something. Cause like it's the, the, uh, the ROI on just showing some type of uh, value to your potential audience, whether that be a music supervisor, which I've met on TikTok as well. Like, like there's a lot of opportunity yep. that's still there for, for I mean, I just introduced you to free. our, I introduced you to our friend, Nicole. Um, oh yeah. Nicole. She's on me. Yeah. Are you, I think you guys are having a call soon or something. Yeah, yeah, we um, just we just talked uh, last week actually. Oh, great! Yeah. Yep. Um, but you know, she's a, a head of sync at a major publisher in New York. Like she's she's great, and um, yeah, I think uh, again, it's just anything in a music career is just showing up, staying consistent. Nothing is overnight. Um, you know, if you if you upload a track to Spotify, like don't expect it to just go automatically viral. Like you should have a lot of tracks up there. You know, mm -hmm. um, but it's just anything in this career. It's just showing up consistently. Um, but, you know, I think we can both agree. Sync is like a whole different animal because, you know, Spotify, it seems like they're topping out on how many, how many subscribers they have, you know, it's like, they're, I, I think I forgot if like they stopped growing this year or like they barely grew or something. Well, that, but, that you think about that's why they have all these other products and stuff they're trying to release, like the yeah. uh, the collaboration features and yeah. yeah. But you look at licensing, and it's like everybody and their mom is becoming a content creator. They all need music behind their videos. That all gets mm -hmm. licensed. Every single person at this point wants to leave their nine to five. They're all starting small businesses. A lot of them are learning to run ads. They need to use music that's licensed behind their video. You know, got to pay for it. And that's just, that's just like one, or, you know, one part of it, but there's still a fuckload of music supervisors and like, you know, there's so, there's so much more money in this corner than I think anybody ever expected. Um, and so, yeah, it's still, it's still a massive market. So what, what does the future kind of hold for you? Like in licensing, what are your kind of plans with it? Obviously you're helping a lot of people. Uh, license their own music, uh, but you're still obviously licensing a bunch. As you said, you just had a bunch of briefs that you did today. Um, yeah, man, what's, what's, you know, and also thanks for being so nice, man. You gave me so much oh, credit. No, bro, it's, this was, this was, <laughs> I mean, I remember when we were on the call and it's like, you got a massive check from us and you were like, yeah, like I can finally do this full time. Like I'm leaving my job. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, cool. I didn't think it was going to happen, man. Cause like, Shoot, it's a, it's that taking that first step and being like, all right, I'm gonna be on my own now. Like it's super duper scary, but like yeah. that pitch was like extremely pivotal in like making sure that I had a cushion, so that even if I wanted to take like the next three months off, I could, because like I still had music, I still have music in that pitch that is going through circulation for for different placements and things like that, and like you can keep the ball rolling. So like. Honestly, and you're still getting royalties to this day from stuff yeah, that like, you landed way back in the day. Crazy. So it's cool. Yeah. I got a Bally Total Fitness uh, uh, placement from someone that purchased the track from that pitch, like last quarter. It's crazy. We're still putting in the work, baby. <laughs> Freaking awesome. Um, but like, I mean, for me at this moment in time, like the goals now, I really want to make sure that I uh, continue to teach and share about 
how to my at least my personal method on how to get yeah. uh, into sync licensing and kind of hit the ground running because it took me a long yeah. time to kind of figure it out. Um, well, dude, it's also just like a giving thing. I mean, like I think both of us like we happen to help everybody, and like that that can result in money. But I think the ultimate thing is like. Yo, like a lot of our friends in music aren't making much money. And yeah. here is a whole corner of the industry with billions of dollars that people just don't get into because they're confused. But like, if you just have a simple way to solve that, it just helps your friends. You know, a lot, a lot of people think that, you know, making a lot of money for yourself, it could be, you know, a bad thing, but what's the, like the way to do it is like by getting all of your friends to make a lot of money too. <laughs> like that's, that's the real way to do it. It's like, Hey, I want all my <laughs> friends to make money here. Like this is going to be, yeah. there's plenty to go around. Like it's a growing market and there's a lot of opportunity for everybody. You know, it's just messed up, that's, man. Like when growing up as a jazz musician, like, Oh yeah. Most musicians are broke. I went so to a jazz like jam. Dude, I played a jazz jam last night and I can attest all my friends there for the most part were broke. <laughs> it's like, dang, man. Like, so like that was my big push was like, yo, like y'all see this? Like, yeah. it, especially like if you're able to improvise and compose on the spot, like you, this is, this is easy. So like, I mean, it's just being able to share that kind of value. Like it helps everybody out. Everybody can eat. That's the, the biggest yeah. takeaway is that like, there's, there's enough bread for everybody. Yeah, it's the first time in the music industry's existence where there are more buyers than sellers for business related music, which is just and business wise, if you find a market like that, that's dangerous. Yes. Very dangerous. Yeah. Well, dude, you're the best. Uh thanks for chatting today. Um oh, yeah, quick sure. quick questions uh I want to ask you before we sign off. So first All thing, right. um, you know, any specific advice that you would kind of give anybody really going for it right now? Cause you were at a place where it was, it was a lot more difficult and now it's, you got momentum. Everything is, is moving and grooving. Um, but yeah, man, any advice? Um, consistency is, is key and be human, be human. Cause like a lot of, a lot of people, um, and I, I talk to supervisors about this all the time. They're like, they can smell the desperation under someone's breath in an email. A thousand like, percent. You can't yeah. do that. So like, I mean, and again, this is just another tactic that I've learned through that pitch. It's like um, investing in one's education is like the other biggest thing. So like I'll, I'll pay, I'll buy a burrito or I'll send a virtual DoorDash to these, yeah. uh, to, to music supervisors and sync agents just to kind of understand how I can make their their job easier. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Because if you if you make their job easier, they're gonna to wanna to make work with you even more so. Yeah. Uh, it's not just about um, the music side of things, but like even doing things with your music to make their job easier. There's a lot of different like nuance I, to that. I can a hundred percent tell you that that pitch gets the sheer volume and quality of clients that we have because everything is absolutely compliant and done for them and everything is good to go. And there's really good music in that order. <laughs> it's, it's an easy sell. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, they just want to know they're not going to get sued. It's like, exactly. how can you help me not get sued? And how can you save me time? Also, is your music good? <laughs> like <laughs> plus. That's a plus. Right. Um, so, and also, yeah, I think, Oh, there you go. Sorry. No, 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 you're good. You're good. Uh, pluggables, dude. I know you got a bunch going on. Uh, and yeah, man, what are you up to? I like that word. Um, pluggables, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, outside of, uh, outside of just fo following on social media, I do, um, free sync training basically every, at least once, once a month. And, um, yeah, come through, shoot me a DM. Let me know how I can help. Josh is the best. Hit up Josh. He's great. Uh, dude, you're the best. Thanks so much. Um, Bro. And I think that's going to be it. You're the best. Thanks so much for joining, bro. No problem, bro. <laughs> All right. We got to do this again.